Доброе утро. Good morning. This session is called open discussion, and uh, I uh, think we will have this discussion because uh, national goals through national projects is the very hot topic, uh, which uh, was written by Dmitry Butrin in Commerce and Paper and was discussed in the lobbies. The audience is prepared, so I don't have to explain uh, what uh, the topic means. And before the discussion, we make a short survey, maybe, and then we come back uh, to this survey in the end. I'd like to ask questions. Uh, the question number first, number one: Do national projects uh, allow? to achieve the national goals and five uh, uh, variants for, to answer you can yes no and uh, not not sure completely agree let's take a look at the uh, audience uh, do, do national projects allow to achieve national goals what kind of results let's be patient a little bit uh, meanwhile uh, i would like to have a small remark about the yesterday's speech of our Prime Minister. I uh, started to rem remember, remind about the regulation um, projects. Uh, so every time, every time uh, uh, there are uh, old, quite old rules uh, while uh, leaving the country. So six seconds, uh, uh, now let's take a look. Do you all understand how to use these devices? Very good. Then. Let's take a look. Complete partially agree is the most popular version. Let us uh, deny or confirm this statement. I will uh, start with uh, Mr. Siluanov, and I would like to ask you the same question, whether uh, national projects make it possible to achieve national goals, uh, life expectancy improvement, life standard improvement, and so on, please. National projects and national goals uh, are elements of uh, uh, the executive order, and an executive order is uh, is containing uh, top level or high level goals, and then the tools are mentioned how to achieve these goals. And if we compare same goals uh, set six years ago in the executive order from 2012, we didn't see the clear uh, tools there. But uh, where this work, this work was set on uh, the project basis, there uh, we succeeded. We succeeded to achieve this. Let's take the payroll um, issue, for example. This was a methodological work, and uh, this work was organized um, from bottom to the top, and this this uh, goal was achieved in the same way at uh, uh, with uh, the Shebi uh, um, uh, housing. Uh, other issues, uh, number of investments, uh, GDP was not executed. Why? Because there was no clearly structured work organized on these goals, on these areas. What happens now? Now we have uh, tasks and uh, uh, we used to have them also in 2012, but also we have uh, toolkits, national projects, and we always all also uh, mentioned that these are not only resources, not only about the resources, but also about the management system, uh, how to manage goals and objectives. We understand what to do, who is going to do this, and how it's going to be achieved. This, and I already. Uh, told you this is a novelty in our management, in our governance. And uh, I'm sure that taking into account um, the building the system from federal to municipal level on uh, solving this task and uh, also including the monitoring system, the system of involvement of all uh, local authorities, uh, we will be able to succeed. Um, you uh, are going to make the monitoring. Let's come back to the executive orders of 2012, which was mentioned by Mr. Silvanov. But there was no clear-cut evaluation system how these uh, executive orders uh, should be implemented. And uh, we have paper-based calculations uh, showing quite good results. And we have real indicators related to geopolitics, of course. Uh, the uh, reduction of real incomes, and uh, they do not fit uh, properly. And uh, I would like to ask you to comment, how are you going to uh, do the monitoring of uh, national projects in your chamber of accounts? 
Good morning, everybody, once again. I think that the executive orders, uh, and first and foremost to the Order 204, they uh, create new frameworks for national goals. And um, uh, today we are on a very important threshold um, in this time of our forum. Now we are finishing the preparation work on the main national projects, and we haven't seen them yet. Uh, finally, after the presidium of the state Soviet uh, with the participation of uh, president, a lot of uh, questions were asked by governors on the uh, indicators, on uh, the um, refining of these indicators, I think, uh, and I'm sure uh, the uh, uh, work is underway. And we didn't see the final version of these projects, and I did, uh, and I tried to, to uh, to explore it yesterday, to take a look at these uh, figures, and uh, I still saw that uh, the certain mismatch. And the second point is very important, and uh, I'm, uh, I agree with Mr. Siluanov, this framework is very clear-cut. Personal responsibility will be uh, set not only for every uh, national project, but for every goal, and the ministries uh, as executives will be indicated there. And I'd like to come back to the problems, to the issues. First question you asked, for example, we have a goal, a goal to uh, control, to curb poverty. But we don't have a national projects on that. So, but this should be a tool, a tool to do this. Yes, but uh, it is not, uh, it is not uh, there. It's not going to be achieved there in full swing. There are d uh, directions for the work of the government uh, recently issued. And uh, they say that uh, every goal will uh, be uh, set uh, for a certain uh, roadmap, a certain plan of work. And we have another new format of work, plans to achieve, uh, to execute national projects. And these plans will be broader than national projects. And I want to tell you from the very beginning, our projects, even if they are going to be achieved completely, do not uh, fulfill completely national goals. Or uh, another example, national goal as the bringing the number of uh, uh, innovative uh, enterprises to 50% of the whole amount of enterprises. So directly, we do not have direct uh, measures, but digital support, support of um, entrepreneurs, support of exports, uh, there are such measures in national projects. But we understand, we do understand that uh, well, we have a certain project, a scientific project, project called science. But uh, the question is how uh, they will provide uh, uh, all bases to achieve the national goal, whether these steps are enough. We can only see out of these plans. And then we will have a question whether these measures are enough or we need more money, more additional measures. And uh, I always uh, express my opinion in recent time. National projects are not enough to achieve uh, the uh, uh, speed of economic growth, which will bring our economy on the fifth place. Although we were economy number five some years ago, and nevertheless, <clears throat> this goal is still on the agenda. And um, there are growth rates above global average, but we need also other structural steps. For instance, reforming of the state governance. And uh, yesterday, a very positive idea was expressed to reduce regulatory loads almost uh, by two times and absolutely support this because our evaluations also give such results, such uh, milestones. For example, we always discussed the issue of uh, reduction, the role of government in the economics, restructuring of some state-owned companies, uh, migrating them to the same state as uh, private companies, privatization. But uh, this part is absolutely absent in national projects. Or I believe that uh, we should significantly increase the powers of uh, uh, constituted entities. Uh, we should give some part of resources to entities. And uh, this is a very serious structural steps. They are not all included and uh, set out in uh, national projects. That's why I believe we need additional measures of politics of policy which would uh, uh, provide the drive and the economic growth we, re we need. And uh, your final question, 2012, you remember a lot of uh, goals and objectives were set, but I believe there were no discussion of results. 
uh, one of the figures were mentioned, 90-93% uh, executed, but on our opinion, only 70%. If we take into account formal things, what kind, 25 million jobs? Uh, 25 million was, was not achieved, as you know, 16 million only after we after methodology was changed. Uh, the labor efficiency should be increased, improved by 50 percent, only 5 percent improvement we can register. In the recent six years, uh, we had a drops in the... Uh, Mr. Sobyanov, Sobyanian starts to uh, smiling, so we will come back to this issue, I think. Uh, I'd like to... You also mentioned technological innovations enterprises in 2018 in the the task was the target was set uh, up to 40 percent at that time it was in the eight percent now it's also only eight percent so the share of uh, innovative companies didn't change but there are questions to the calculation we need to use more uh, clear-cut methodologies i spent a lot of time uh, I wanted to continue with Mr. Kudrin. You started to uh, answer my question to Mr. Siluanov whether national projects are combining with national goals, but you didn't uh, ask answer a question about the Chamber of Accounts. So now you're waiting for the government to formulate, based on the national projects, their plans, and then based on these plans, you're going to develop the methodology. Uh, am I right? You as a Chamber of Accounts. We as Chamber of Accounts are an independent uh, constituent body uh, of the external uh, state control. We're independent from the government, and we're going to monitor. I think it's going to be our contribution. We're not only be say whether it's include, uh, executed or not. We're going to analyze uh, why it was not executed. We should regroup it somehow or uh, involve different resources and take different steps. We need to have a constant dialogue with the government to be a partners and not uh, such severe controllers or supervisors, and we should provide an objective picture. And this deficit of information, which uh, was uh, in the previous uh, executive orders, we should liquidate it, we should eliminate it. We should provide the full picture on our side of uh, the way how the execution process is going on. For example, we heard that now uh, methodology uh, should be specified to, for the labor efficiency improvement. Yesterday, we heard about the new methodology of uh, calculating poverty. We, I think, I'm afraid we are hurting Mr. Sobanian without uh, not to giving him the word because Mr. Silanov wants to add. Yeah, national projects are tools to achieve national goals. For instance, national goal um, to be part of uh, the top five countries with the most uh, developed economies. Of course, we have a few national um, projects how to improve uh, the uh, volume of economics in Russia. This is labor, pro productivity, exports, small and medium enterprises, and so on and so forth. But we also have the plan to stimulate investments. We have uh, plans, um, and I'm, I agree here with Mr. Kutrin, to uh, reduce regulatory uh, burden. And so national projects is a toolkit to achieve global goals, and for these goals we have program-based documents, uh, main guidelines for work of the government of Russia, and for each uh, goal there is a plan in the government. The government prepared this plan, and this plan will uh, be issued by the government uh, and the executives. What else I want to tell you? To realize these national goals, uh, not only resources of national projects are used, uh, the whole state machine is used. That's very important to understand. And once again, answering to your question, national projects allow to achieve goals. And my answer is the national project is a tool to uh, execute, to implement these goals. There is a ratio between national projects and national programs, and uh, we come back to it. Uh, and now the question to Mr. Sabanian. I, I deliberately do not introduce our guests today. Uh, we have a special uh, angle of view through which we look at uh, national projects. And the case uh, with Mr. Sabanian, he was heading the uh, team of uh, State uh, Council on this topic. Uh, Mr. Zabanin, well, uh, just a philosophical evaluation. Let's finish with this. 
What do you think is lacking for the state governments to achieve national projects, to execute national projects as tools to achieve national goals? We have uh, so much state governance, I think it's too much already. And uh, when they say what is lacking, let's add something, let's invent something else. Uh, well, uh, if I hear such messages, uh, I'm uh, a little bit embarrassed because uh, I can't understand how it's going to be in the real life. Uh, a, 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 a couple of new uh, regulations, a couple of new regulatory acts for ministries and agencies, and everything would be fine. And, but uh, I'm afraid we would uh, get a rather negative result in this case. Most probably here we need to, to have a program-based approach to accumulate what we have already in place. Maybe we will come to the uh, um, to thinking about uh, state projects, uh, government projects. But for a person who is not a professional, it's very hard to understand the whole hierarchy which exists there. And um, uh, Mr. Sobyanin and Mr. Sulanov already mentioned the plans of the government. It's another substance. So the rest, government or state programs, another entity, uh, programs of the regions. And when we speak about a national project, for instance, in the area of education, well, uh, it means about 100 billions annually sent to this goal. Uh, this is not the exact uh, figure, but just the order of magnitude. And for the school, education in the country, we spent three trillion rubles. Uh, you imagine the difference, three trillions and 100 billions. These resources should work together to one goal. Now we have um, passports of uh, national projects, and uh, the government starts to get together all these uh, resources to uh, regional resources are added, federal resources are added, off-budget resources. For example, uh, it might seem uh, simple how to distribute 100 billions for uh, the improvement of um, housing, construction of housing. 100 billion, it's not a big money for the whole country, but how to involve 4 trillion of off-budget resources and uh, one more trillion for the infrastructure. That's the big task. And uh, Mr. Siluanov is smiling, but uh, I understand his smile that 100 billion is not a big money for Moscow. It's not so big, but for us, it's quite big. It's not too big for the country versus 5 trillions, which uh, are going to be spent on these uh, goals. These are absolutely incomparable things. And uh, Mr. Siluanov keeps telling to the colleagues about it that there's, there's not a big deal to di distribute budget money, but to uh, employ the whole resource of the country, HR, material resource, that's the big task of the state governance. And what about the regional uh, level? Does it uh, mean the bigger uh, indebtedness of regions, uh, if we speak about national projects? I think it's vice versa. National projects uh, just add uh, about 500 billion rubles annually to regional budgets. Uh, they uh, don't uh, go for some uh, unknown things. They go for specific things, for roads, for education. This is only a plus for regional budgets. So I don't think they would entail any additional costs. Of course, there will be some costs or expenses, but uh, they will give the um, synergy and will just support the region. Let's come back to a very important uh, aspect, uh, comparison of uh, uh, national projects and uh, state programs. Uh, and by the way, uh, it starts from uh, your common cooperation in the Ministry of Finance. And where are there now? Uh, a question to you first, Mr. Silvanov. State pro programs and the program-based approach of uh, the government is still there. No one uh, eliminated it. Uh, the question is about the efficiency of these state programs. And some experts challenge the efficiency. 
and uh, sometimes it's justified. Why? Because uh, building up the toolkit doesn't uh, happen as we work within national projects. National project is a project-based approach which should be basis for all target uh, program documents of the government. And I'm sure that uh, we will gradually and we will go over to the similar program-based approach when we realize state programs. What we have today. Today, a pure national project, a project tool, is a part of a state program. Uh, the program has project-based goals and process-based goals because uh, process-based pro without processes it's not possible to realize to achieve any goal. I see transformation of uh, state programs to the same similar toolkit which we use when uh, we implement national projects. A toolkit to realize national project or a toolkit as is. In uh, here we have a uh, two steps in toolkit or what? No, national project is a uh, uh, part of a state program, a national program. But uh, building up and uh, implementation and uh, making work of these tools should happen in the way as uh, we are about to realize, to implement national projects. It means uh, clear-cut target setting, responsibilities, uh, controlling points, monitoring resources. So, and of course, uh, it comes from uh, top to bottom. And this approach uh, we do not have in uh, state programs. We should admit this. But I will say once again, we are confident that we are going to build up this mechanism of the national projects. We are going to ever expand it using this program approach which government is utilizing. Alexei Kudrin, what would you say? I think that this hierarchy of uh, national projects and the state programs has become uh, overly complex. I will give you an example. A national project, let's say uh, demography, education, healthcare, and, and ecology, they are not going to be implemented as uh, measures. They will be implemented via state programs. All the national projects are being divided as events within the state programs. For example, demography is a national projects will be implemented uh, via eight state uh, programs which are uh, made their way into the budget and the state uh, program would be an instrument or a structural element of the budget planning and to be able to uh, be a part of the budget you can do it only via state program all these national projects are being written between the state programs it's quite a complex situation although we want to focus on priorities, and these uh, priorities should be uh, tracked. But it looks like we have to divide them, break them down into eight state program. Each program has its own um, champion, and eight uh, state programs, like I said. This could be Ms. Skvortsova, Mr. Tapilin, and Vasilyeva, uh, Kulakov, Mr. Oreshkin. They'll be responsible for the National Project Demography, all eight people, in essence, uh, via their own departments and agencies. But it looks like it's only one state program. It has to execute several national projects. It should be um, vice versa, and sometimes two or three projects. For example, the state program of uh, economic development of the innovative economics is uh, implementing three national projects. So we're off the focus. We have one entity or person responsible for the state program. They should be working for the uh, subordinate to the three vice uh, prime ministers and to track whether we follow these indicators, always to focus on these goals. But I will repeat myself. It's somewhat a uh, complex system, and I would like to add, uh, just to complete the picture, we have yet another format of planning. It's a federal program, federal level program. I'm afraid that you'll be totally confused. The point is that a national project will be realized, among other things, via federal projects. Yes, via federal projects. And a federal project, now, if you're confused with the terminology, what to say about us, and the federal project as a structural unit has to be has to be completely integrated into a state program, into a budget. 
Structurally speaking, it could be a link in a public program. So each national project has a three or four federal projects, exactly. And in this way, we have established quite a complex management system. And I was saying that uh, it looks like it looks like a nice picture. Yes, it could be uh, represented as a matrix, all by all these interconnections, because any uh, planning format should be should enable us to focus on the main thing, keep priorities in the focus, and to concentrate our resources. If we fail to achieve our goal, we have to regroup these resources, add new events. But this system is doing it in a very clumsy way. This is why today in the management system for, all, for national projects, I believe that we can foresee some risks in terms of the management system. Now, you've been sharing about your um, perspective, and I would like to share one example. And, uh, uh, watching a TV set, where, where seeing a picture, like if I had to do a show, if not just a snippets, but uh, to do a to do a visualization as I do a TV program. Maybe it's a strange analogy, but again, I am from the TV industry. I remember that back in 1984, me and my parents uh, moved uh, from the brick uh, apartment building to a panel apartment building. And to first, uh, to put up a picture on the wall, you had to take a drill, then you you put the, list, the slow wood spec, then you put the screw into the wall, and then you hang a picture on the wall. And had I have to share what you're sharing uh, via visualize it via pictures. I would visualize it, visualize it like putting a picture on the wall. It looks like it makes sense, but a little bit complex. Uh, Sergei Semyonovich, what do you think about this uh, coordinate system as Alexei Kudrin just represented it? Does it make sense for you? Uh, you as a representative of uh, a Russian region, a small region of the Russian Federation, which is the city of Moscow. You see, basically annually we see um, new projects, so we see certain tasks. And if the whole management system has to be reconfigured every time for a new project, then the whole cycle, three or four year long cycle, will be only about that. We reconfigure, we plan, we redeploy, the new challenge, again redeploy, the new challenge, again redeploy, we restructure our management system every time. We do not do that. We have about a dozen of the big state programs in the city of Moscow, let's say a state program for developing healthcare, and all national projects and the federal level projects, all the uh, work which we are facing, we incorporate into it and using all the resources that we have, let's say, in healthcare and all the resources which the city is uh, allocating uh, for this challenge. We have some other challenges related to the education. And all the projects are being incorporated into a state program uh, of the city of Moscow for education. So it's no uh, effort for us to incorporate any challenges and any assignments into the project. At the same time, we can clearly see priorities of the city of Moscow in its development. And a new goal is simply slightly correcting these guidelines, identifying certain priorities and prioritizing uh, this modern period in our development. We've been fighting for that, and Anton Silanov will confirm to that, that we did our best uh, to maintain this management system, not to destroy it, so that we would be able, um, in terms of the management of the city of Moscow, long-term management of the city of Moscow could be incorporated painlessly into those um, uh, tasks and assignments which are part of the federal or national projects. And I think we succeeded in, with that. Let me, let me um, probe into that, if I may. It's good that we have a Russian federal system, because each region has their own understanding of how to absorb these programs. We do not identify anything. It's, uh, it's very easy for us to incorporate, but uh, those who have to identify certain projects. How should a federal government and uh, chamber of accounts, I'm going back to the monitoring of these, of these uh, programs, how should they evaluate and measure each and every region of Russia, which is absolutely okay, 
I'm, I'm all for the federal structure and effective federation in our country. Since one um, region incorporated in this way, the other region incorporates it in a different way, how would you evaluate overall efficiency of what is going on? I would go back to this uh, pyramid metaphor. Without um, systematizing our goals, this would be impossible to attack these challenges because, like we were saying, there is a upper tier um, uh, goals which are broken down into more detailed and then go down to specific events, specific events which are part of the monitoring system which is done by the <coughs> Russian government. And so there are federal projects. There are region-level projects which have to be um, accepted uh, within, as a part of overall coordination with the federal projects. And in these regional projects, we will have um, events which are approved by a certain respective um, ministry. And these region-level projects will be a part of the monitoring system. And the system is built in a new way. It's actually innovation. One would say that the monitoring will be done uh, for the beginning of the planning, uh, when we develop the project-related documentation, expert evaluation, then actually hitting the ground, like we say, the zero ground, uh, first floor and second floor, and so on, if we speak in the building metaphors. So this kind of uh, system will be built and utilized for the uh, regional level and national level or federal level projects. You're asking me how this system is going to work. It's going to work like that, because the hierarchy, the full-scale uh, top-to-bottom hierarchy enables us to make managerial decisions, because if we are seeing that we are not making progress anywhere, we can analyze it and we make a decision that it should not be efficient. It doesn't make sense to uh, pursue this project. Okay, let's change resources. Let's change our goal. I want to say that the national projects and the instruments with which uh, we implement them, they're flexible. We have agreed about that in the government. It's not a mantra that we are supposed to chant. Based on the monitoring and analyzing the implementation, we are going to make amendments and corrections. We even have such a right, uh, thanks to the parliament. We've been given um, uh, authorities, even without any amendments to the budget, to make these kind of decisions uh, for correcting correcting our project offices and, and projects. Even when I was, you, you were giving an interview to Commerson paper, you didn't do it. Alexei Kutrin, would that be easier for you to monitor this junction between the federal and regional projects and instructions? Of course, each ministry in each uh, region is working on their respective uh, state and regional programs. We can see them. Of course, all of this um, could be painted as a very large picture, but I want to say that on the high-level goals, the goals which are in the top tier of the national project level, there are 115. And if we dig uh, deeper, including federal-level projects and uh, and all other lower level. We have over thousands of them, 1,000 of them, which is very um, calls for a very complex uh, monitoring mechanism. There are over 3,000. And the governors has made some calculations. They even have a whole presentation on this topic. Supposedly, they also include the regional funds into the picture. And in this regard, it's a very um, complex system. Of course, we will be uh, capable of uh, tracking and monitoring it and hopefully to get very uh, real-time uh, information about all the indicators, but I will say that within a year it is assumed to build a methodology for monitoring of certain indicators. I've um, articulated this number. Now we have 70 percent of indicators in national projects are not being monitored. We do not have any statistical observations, and it takes a certain methodology to aggregate them to be able to find um, particular indicators. So within a year, we are only going to adopt these methodologies, and only after that we will see how to monitor and to track a certain indicator. But I believe that as a part of our conversation, we can identify one thing. It's a little bit of fetish, uh, the way we uh, treat this indicator system. We think that once we've installed these indication systems, it's all going to play out and it's going to, uh, going to work itself out. But achieving these key indicators, be it economic growth or fighting poverty, increasing lifespan, technological advancements of Russia, depends on many 
on, on, on a political um, situation, on, on the sequence of the political events. And, and like Sergei Sabianin has mentioned very rightfully, um, that we would not uh, double and increase the different kind of uh, burdens and, and controlling functions. So it's about it's about the holistic approach to policies and creating trust to the uh, national policies. It's not always can be described in the hierarchy of all these indicators. I would uh, mention one important quality which the government should have. It's a trust. Now we can see in public polls that the trust is not that high, but it defines, nevertheless, the opinion of um, a final uh, or, or the bottom market player, like saying uh, the country identified the national goals, and I believe that the measures proposed will lead us to success, and I am beginning to invest and participate in the Russian economy, because I do believe that this system and this uh, system of measures is right. And I have to jump on this uh, living train and get from this growth my own benefits and my own results. Now, my question is, this private person or a citizen of Russia or an investor uh, who are investing in healthcare, in education, answering to this internal question, do they believe in this system? And in this regard, the system should evoke, invoke trust. It should be simpler, it should be more clear-cut, and these priorities have to be clearly monitored. Not about 3,000 indicators that have to be tracked, no, for the general public. It's not even 1,000. The even 115 is a little bit too much. I suppose for certain professional fields it is important to have uh, that many, but still we have to build such policies model in our government which should um, evoke trust. And I believe that maybe these measures uh, and steps for trust are not enough. Thank you for this remark. Because um, we've been discussing about how to do that. Um, maybe we came to the point of what national projects are all about. And uh, the number 13, infrastructure in particular. And I would um, propose to speak more about that because the science and education, they're industry specific. But everybody is using public highways and roads. And in this case, uh, you are, um, um, you are, Sergei Sapian, the role model in terms of the how infrastructure is being developed in the city of Moscow. But when we correlate it with the national goals uh, stated and the way they're being implemented, what is the uh, super goal? What do we want to achieve by uh, realizing this 12 national project and number 13, like I said, the infrastructure? What do we envision? How do we envision this national project? Thank you. Uh, do you want me to re read you the presidential executive order? No, we have read it, uh, we know it, but when it comes to uh, practical implementation, as for the practical implementations, I do not quite agree with uh, Alexei Kudrin. When I've been in the government, uh, we've been writing the 2020 program. I doubt that uh, somebody will believe us by reading some of our projects on paper. People, people react positively not to the projects, which uh, only professionals can understand, and not to 115 criteria, not to mention 3,000 criteria. But people react positively to what they see every day. Whether this city is changing or not, if nothing is changing for better in their daily lives, if they do not see any external changes for better, it doesn't matter how, how long and how much you tell to people about the projects, there will be no sense. So the, the goal has been stated that in the next year we have to see some positive changes, not just in abstract ways somewhere, but in real uh, tangible fields and tangible industries. Uh, Sergei Simonovich, do we have a different list of indicators that people have to look at and to believe in this program or not? Speaking of the global indicators, there are 115. Maybe he specified my question. The president identified 115 key indicators of the region's uh, performance. 
These are the key indicators uh, for the regional authorities, including the federal authorities. It's related to the labor uh, productivity, poverty, um, salaries, uh, demographic and uh, economics. Fifteen key indicators, fifteen. And everything else is, uh, can be broken down to the level of government, uh, specialized industries and ministries. And once again, I will say we have to see some visible results, and one of such visible results would be the level of comfort of, of living in our cities. We even have such a project related to the comfortable environment and creating this environment, which is very important. It creates a different attitude uh, to the place you're living in. And I believe it's uh, even more important than to share what kind of projects that we have uh, thrown on the picture, 20 of these and 40 of these and 80 of these. I'm speaking about real results in real fields. As for the city of Moscow, yes, we can see visualization, we can see it every day. We can see the new roads and we can see all this uh, new infrastructure. But but when we speak about empirical evaluation, so to speak, by the voters, by the population, in terms of implementation of these national projects, how would you envision their visualization in terms of just a common person who lives in a city, in a town? I doubt that too many people will go to the website of the uh, Chamber of Accounts or the Russian government to see what corresponds to what, but in real life, in real day, what should should be should become visible to people. I agree with Sergei Sabyanin that uh, we will be evaluated by people in terms of uh, not by indicators but by real changes, by what's going on in their homes, in their cities, in their hospitals where they're getting their medical services, in the educational facilities, and. Um, these are the goals that we are going to target with our national projects. What is going to change? You see, we have very grand plans in terms of uh, in terms of uh, upgrading our infrastructure. We have uh, some more global plans. I'm speaking about uh, the big uh, highways. Uh, I'm speaking about building new um, uh, airports and the seaports. It will also become visible. But among other things, this will be um, decisions and solutions. Uh, for example, we have a project about the safety on the roads, increasing safety on the roads, and the citizens will be able to see that. Uh, it will become very real, changing the urban environment. In uh, this year, we will send uh, significant resources to this program, and this program starts to spin off uh, in uh, last year's, and this year it's going to get additional funds. Everyone would feel and should feel uh, changes of uh, the uh, uh, healthcare service quality because additional resources are sent there too. Now, uh, uh, treatment of diseases will uh, happen in a more wide, uh, more extensive uh, way of using methods and opportunities of uh, our medicine. And uh, so additional resources are also sent to this goal. Without speaking about economic projects, creating of uh, additional uh, work spaces, workplaces, uh, jobs, stimulating uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, credits will be more available, more affordable for those who is willing to start a new business. And this year, everyone should already feel, especially in four regions, uh, uh, to start a business in a very simple way uh, by, well, if um, a person has a known business as a self-employed person, uh, in two weeks we have 8,000 registration, online registration. Kaluga region, Tatarstan, Moscow region and Moscow, right? Yes, uh, exactly. 8,000, 8,000 downloads. And uh, in two years, uh, when uh, we uh, well uh, started this uh, initiative, please, you should register. Like, uh, we won't play anything. We had only 2,000 in two years. And now, for two weeks, we have 8,000. 
It's very prospective, and this digitalization will work for simplification of uh, doing business, for working uh, of small enterprises in all these areas. There will be changes in this year. Again, we are now moving to the economics standpoint. Economic standpoints, and now elections are far away. So, Mr. Sabyanin, uh, this is uh, this card is uh, the sign of uh, changes in Moscow. I already use uh, public transport. Have you thought about some markers, some points, some uh, some signs for the voters, for the for the population? That's the plan. That's the plan. Not only how to distribute the budget, and what uh, is the real plan? What should really emerge? And uh, it's important also from uh, the point of view of PR, uh, if I may say this, um, in terms of the taxpayers, what should be interesting? Well, of course, uh, you're right, in, uh, in our government, we evaluated the need and the uh, availability of these results, first results and then goals uh, of the national projects, because uh, from uh, the way whether uh, the uh, results, the successes of uh, the governments of regions is available, is, uh, is evident, the trust will be uh, built, what was mentioned by Mr. Kudrin. Uh, and we had an agreement with the mass media that work which will be done, receive uh, uh, some public enlightenment and some uh, public communication and support. And this work is also planned and will be made. Mr. Kudrin, what is your comment? I'm not going to play a role of the only skeptic here. Well, uh, the system is a little bit bulkier, and I think we should find ways how to simplify it and uh, maybe make it possible for everybody. The leaders, the elite of uh, regions of the country, they say, yes, this uh, program is uh, absolutely right and correct, and they should uh, be absolutely sure that uh, it's going to be executed at all anyway. And uh, it shouldn't be just dissolved. And, uh, well, uh, it sh the common goal should be achieved and not just local goals. And now I'd like to come back to another aspect. I believe that a lot of things are done in terms of the distribution of responsibility. But I repeat, you shouldn't over-exaggerate, overestimate this role. It's not enough. Uh, these uh, steps which are written down on paper are not enough. Uh, there are a lot of steps which create the atmosphere, the politics. They do not lie only in uh, the bodies of national projects. And when I mentioned today, we were preparing our proposals for the strategy. And by the way, the regulatory uh, cutting is uh, prepared in our uh, strategic center. We, um, we made an evaluation of all these cuts which should happen. And we have a number of developments which we hope will be gradually implemented and used, but this is a very uh, a remarkable story, cutting the uh, excessive control over the business or controlling burden on the business. Um, we have a long queue of uh, controlling bodies over every, uh, after uh, every business. We should eliminate some part of regulatory active. Those who stay, uh, these bodies, these controlling bodies will find uh, the uh, rest of norms, and they will come to, to control, and again, in a very long queue, uh, tax authorities, uh, prosecutor's office, uh, fire uh, safety department, and so on and so forth. How shall we organize uh, the work here in an initial, on an initial stage of the business, uh, transparent, clear, and uh, easy? In this regard, in this regard, everything so every, uh, all investments and the readiness to invest will depend very strongly. An example of 2018, we know just preliminary evaluations. Uh, the profit grew by more than 30%, the total financial result. But investment in the percentage to GDP on the initial data even shrank. They worked in, they grew in the nominal, but in percentage to GDP, we may arrive at not 21.7 as we had in 2017, but we could have uh, just 21 
So it means that the percentage ratio went down a little bit. And I'd like to remind that one of the goals to reach 25 percent, that was one of the goals. And uh, by the way, in the previous six years, we had uh, the goal of 27 percent. That was the goal which was not uh, a, a, a achieved, by the way. The question is why um, the state sector, the private sector, didn't start to work and uh, didn't begin to invest uh, in uh, the economy. We know that uh, now uh, uh, free uh, funds on uh, the resources is on the deposits, which is equal to the um, annual amount of investments in Russia. The question is why do these companies, why don't these companies see the opportunities and uh, maybe the amount of risks, amount of risk of geopolitical character, regulatory character, growing of taxes, other regulating measures which are due. Uh, it's, uh, these risks are so high and uh, uncertain that these uh, investments won't go still. Where is this threshold? When the situation will change? Well, then another aspect, growth rates of 3.5% 3, 3 are key they will uh, be dependent on two factors this time. We have a factor, or even three main factors of the economic growth. First is uh, labor resources, they're going to be shrinking. Uh, well, our own resources, in-house, yes, without uh, foreign. And uh, the influx of uh, migrants will not be so big like now. Moreover, uh, the real income of government of, of population is not growing, so devaluation, also uh, scared of uh, some part of migrants. Uh, the labor resources will give a minus in uh, the economic growth, and they will have a negative impact on our economic growth. So two factors still there, number of investments and the growth of uh, labor efficiency, which should grow so fast to compensate for other negative factors. I'd like to remind you that labor efficiency dropped in some years before. What should we do to make investors to invest, to be willing to invest and to invest in uh, the uh, uh, prospective technologies and innovative technologies and areas? What's going to happen with the growth rates? That's very hard to achieve. Uh, well, to achieve 3% growth a year is a very overly hard task. and. Uh, it could be covered by some national projects. National project, education, healthcare, uh, will give a very good uh, foundation for the future, for the growth of the life expectancy. is a very long-term, very good uh, task to improve the quality of labor force or of uh, living standards. Education, also, it's a long-term, a mid-term project. Investment in infrastructure, it's more important. But what uh, today, what can we change today to achieve a 3% growth rate? Here we should think very seriously about this. And uh, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. address the question to Mr. Siluanov and Mr. Uh, Sobyanin. What uh, of key measures should be done to make growth rates uh, 3% in the recent years, in the nearest years, and whether we will have this breakthrough in the uh, moods of investors in our country. Uh, well, uh, here we speak about the very peculiarities of Russian language. What should be done to make it 3%? Uh, uh, but the, what should happen? What would happen? What, what would happen that they that we arrive at 3%. In the previous six years period, when uh, we set these goals, they, when they were set, they were doable, by the way. Remember uh, changes which happened uh, in uh, the external conditions, in the, the conditions of export, our uh, goods, uh, the uh, oil prices went down, and uh, of course it was not uh, envisaged in forecasts when we set the goals. Now we are, we made the structure for these years, for recent years, when we are absolutely independent or less dependent on uh, 
uh, external uh, market situation. You mean $40 per barrel budget? Yeah, I mean the forecastability of uh, the course, uh, change rate of inflation rates, uh, predictability of uh, main macroeconomic indicators, which are a basis for the decision making about investment. This is a very important data, a very important foundation. And uh, also, we didn't uh, talk about it before that uh, the con taxation conditions stay unchanged. Although you didn't, uh, didn't say in, a, in return that. But yes, I wanted to say still that we increased uh, VAT tax. This VAT tax, uh, which does not influence directly the entrepreneurial activity, but uh, we uh, eliminated the uh, tax for uh, the real estate, for uh, main assets. We also re uh, eliminated the tax for main assets. So we provided subsidies for and um, cost uh, the tax deductions. We also make an innovation that uh, taxes uh, which uh, are being subsidized uh, then should be directed to the investments which will be made in uh, the production lines. So we don't speak about it, but uh, we have macro conditions um, on a general level. Now we should think we should in stimulate the business. And all our national projects is infrastructure first, uh, improvement of metro structure, upgrading uh, and uh, improvement of roads, then labor productivity. And by the way, this year we already start to realize the project pilots were finished last year, and these pilots allow the enterprises involved to improve the uh, performance by 10 and more percent. Small and medium enterprises, here the share of small and medium enterprises, we set this task in the economics. Uh, you speak that we need to change the structure of economic. This share will in, increase from 22 to, to, to 30. Two to thirty-three percent in the economics by ten uh, percentage point. Then export. We uh, speak about the improvement of uh, non-raw material export. This main the main goal will be uh, then using the administrative resources and uh, tangible resources, and then in order to uh, make this profit in, be invested in the development, we not only create basic conditions for this solution, for this con decision, but we also create a mechanism to stimulate business to invest uh, money in projects. And we start to work spottedly. We have uh, we started this practice of uh, regular meetings with business on the topic of what they are lacking for a specific project. If a project is big and voluminous, if uh, infrastructure is needed, if uh, is this needed to solve some administrative uh, issues or eliminate uh, administrative barriers, which we still have in some levels, we should solve these tasks. So we are coming closer to the spotted wise interaction with entrepreneurs, uh, which relates both to big business and small and medium business. And uh, so through resources, through national projects, through tasks which are set there, through the uh, specific goals to improve investments, and by the way, every agency is now responsible for the growth of investments, every agency, including social bloc. So I believe that this comprehensive approach would allow us to move uh, this issue, to, to make it move. Well, from your modest regional point of view, Mr. Sobyanin, could you answer this question? Three percent of growth, of course, it's in a national agenda, but in, uh, well, how can we stimulate uh, or these, uh, gr this growth? Because real, in, uh, speaking really, this is the key, the very basic and precondition to make uh, it all happen and to make uh, success in national project, to achieve success in national projects. Um, I believe in what uh, Mr. Silanov said, uh, and he absolutely convinced me. The measures, uh, the measures he enlisted, he mentioned, 
will uh, really be given a, a new impetus for our economic development. And if the state invests in money in infrastructure and helps to develop infrastructure to investors, investors will invest too. For previous In previous years, uh, we uh, survived serious upheavals, uh, a number of crises, but nevertheless, we set as a priority infrastructure development in Moscow. For every ruble we invest, we get three rubles investments, independent from the crisis situation. None of the years, for the recent eight years, uh, we had a uh, drop in investments, none of the years. And uh, for these eight years, we managed to achieve 80 percent growth of uh, investment in the working capital. And me it means it works. The only thing I wanted to add, if these investments uh, are invested in the rural area, it would play a role, of course, in significant role, and it would give a very significant impetus. But if these investments in, be uh, invested in big agglomerations, they will give five, six times uh, stronger result. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't deal with uh, uh, rural areas. But we should set priorities when we have limited number of resources, additional resources. I'm not speaking about our current policy. It is going on, and we continue doing this. But we speak about additional resources which we concentrated and which we are willing to um, invest in those points where we could give a very quick win or some dynamics without developing uh, large conglomerations, without concentrating investments there. We will not achieve any innovative growth or not improvement of the labor economics. I'm sure of that. Uh, do you know how to uh, understand the uh, list of Gallup cities, the cities of Russia, where uh, TV ratings are calculated? Well, the economic ministry and the Ministry of Finance should, uh, and they already have these ratings. They know. I mean, the TV rating on the, in the forecast, uh, the TV ratings are calculated. As a matter of fact, I, in this case, would like to ask one more question. Maybe it's uh, off the topic of our panel, but just before the New Year celebration, I had a big interview with uh, Igor Shuvalov in his new uh, position. We have been discussing about the new balance, uh, the balance that we see between the big agglomerations, big cities, and the mid-level cities and small towns where the business usually is not prone to go. It's one of the goals of the development corporations or VEP.RF, as it is called now. There is one very uh, social or, or social and psychological aspect to that. It's quite obvious that big cities with a million plus population, uh, megapolises, uh, they are obvious uh, attraction points for investments, be it within the national projects and beyond the scope of national projects. But what should we do with the rest of the country? I know that this question is not exactly the topic of our discussion, but I believe that a uh, significant share of population lives in small towns, not in megapolises. I agree with uh, Sergei Semyonovich that if we want to get a quick effect in terms of uh, stimulating our economy, we have to play in big cities and big agglomerations, but uh, it's quite obvious that we uh, should not forget about other regions where there may not be such a big concentration of uh, industrial assets and people. People um, have to have the same public services, such as healthcare and education. People have to use um, good roads. It's our um, obligation, and this is why, by the way, going back to national projects, there is, um, there is a challenge to ensure high-quality road construction, no less than 50 percent of all the road network. It um, applies to agglomerations, applies to uh, rural um, settlements and small towns, so this improvement that we have been speaking about in the first part of our conversation, they have to be felt everywhere. 
both in the federal level uh, cities and in small towns as well. So let's go back to the national projects, uh, since uh, they are the title for discussion and topic for discussion. In the uh, mid and short term perspective, what are the risks? Uh, okay, we have the executive order by the president, we have the goals, we have the national projects as they are listed. And here we start digging and start practical work. Where do you think um, we have to focus as to avoid certain mistakes? Uh, out of these 12 and even 13 national projects, since the infrastructures is uh, de facto project uh, number 13. I think the risks, uh, risks of the project's implementations will be identified as we go about doing these projects. We are just in the beginning right now. And the year um, has just kicked off, so we are going to monitor the situation. And as we have been saying, we are going to follow of how certain projects are being evolved, and we are going to take managerial decisions. As for the overall risks of our goals implementations, if we think about the past six-year period, all these changes, external changes that we've seen, all these trade limitations and sanctions and trade wars which are being waged today, it does not benefit not only the global economy but also the Russian Federation since we are deeply integrated into international processes and despite the fact that we are now taking every measure to uh, to be self-sufficient and less dependent on external limitations, nevertheless, the external environment does play um, an impact on our capabilities. Therefore, risk is always there, and we have to take it into account. And as for the progress of the project's implementations and the risks of efficiency, we will, in, we will evaluate them. Let's meet again a year later, and we'll see how things change. Let's meet. Uh, yes, come over. What uh, Vladimir Lenin said, come back in 10 or 20 years. I think the main risk is non-accomplishment of the uh, of the rates of economic growth and uh, economic growth uh, actually actually uh, covers the biggest load um, in terms of uh, implementing main goals. For example, 3.1 percent. Uh, it's a forecast until 2021, which means that the budgetary revenues calculated all the main volumes of investments for the Russian regions and for the whole country in general, for industries. Um, have been calculated. That means that the uh, um, demand on investment goods and the uh, salaries growth, all of this is being a part of this uh, one economic forecast. And I would like to emphasize once again, uh, these are very um, challenging indicators due to certain inertia in our economy and uh, non-reformedness of our economy. And the list of these kind of reforms should be wider than what uh, we see in the national projects. Uh, the main project, the main factors are the uh, growth of the labor productivity. But I will add to that that the domestic demand will not be able to pull our national economy up to 3.1% uh, of the growth. We can get 3.5% uh, of the economic growth if we'll be able to expand our export. We can manufacture it. Uh, in in the places where we are competitive, including the grain exports, although it's written in the uh, national projects that the non-raw material export has to be doubled, it's one of the key aspects of this model, which means that the industrial companies have to be reformed, uh, they have to put out more quality products. Will they be able to do that? That's the question within the next uh, three to four uh, years to be able to uh, accelerate um, and to be uh, qualifiable for the international exports. So I believe that the growth is um, hard to achieve and it decreases the resource base uh, to um, to tackle all other challenges. But to solve this problem of, um, uh, of winning international markets and getting technologies from international markets and to supply our best products and to be a part of the global chains of the added value. It's not a must to make final products. It's enough only to supply best components or become the best in a certain aspects, in certain elements, uh, certain components we supply to international markets. But in this case, we need um, an improvement of our relations with our other countries. We need more favorable 
mm, global situation, and we have to strive toward it and have to understand that without it, among other things, our internal indicators will not become attainable. We have become dependent on that. And in terms of the priorities and list of steps that we have to take into account, it has to begin with improving our positions on international market. We have such a national projects, um, improving international cooperation and uh, our participation in export. We have the whole national projects. I believe it's number one. Another risk which I foresee, if we take the structure of all the national projects, national projects do not describe all the budgets. They do not apply to all the budgetary sphere. In 2019, out of all national projects, including number 13 for the infrastructure, one trillion seven billion 700 billion rubles will be spent, and the biggest expenses will be for the uh, demography uh, national projects. Next will be the modernization 384 billion, then 100 and 160 billion will be the healthcare national projects and others. It's about 9.5% of the federal budget for the for this year 2019, 9.5%. Other 91% or 90.5% accounted for other expenses which will be structured otherwise and formally they're not aimed at implementing these national projects. And the whole budgetary system with the Russian regions at about uh, 10 trillion. Uh, give or take. And in this case, we have 1 trillion 700 billion, what we are discussing right now. And if you look at the structure of all the challenges and, and the goals, I was reiterating, and I say it is not enough that we take into account the priorities related to healthcare, um, infrastructure, and education. We have a um, quite comprehensive plan for building uh, main infrastructure, but expenses on the infrastructure in our country, such as uh, roads and other um, communications and logistics, they have to be uh, way bigger, which means that the resources have to be redistributed. We have made evaluation, having studied the uh, international experience in the moment of uh, achieving higher economic indicators, like I've mentioned, we have to have to add at least 3% of the GDP to the main things like the education, healthcare, and infrastructure. 3% of the GDP. If you'll see how the budget is planned for the next three years, you will not see changes in the structure of the national GDP spending. When we speak about education or, let's say, healthcare, it stays within uh, indexation expenses, building up revamping expenses based on indexing and the rate of growth. So the, cro the expenses grow according to the rate of growth in indexation and no more. And my question is, is that a breakthrough in, in, in health care? If we really want to decrease mortality among the uh, able-bodied population and we're expecting this breakthrough, there are many right and, and good measures uh, which are stated to the modern technology and applying medicines, but the scale and scope of their application will not be a decisive factor. The same is true for education, even less. For the whole project of education, it's allocated only about 700 billion for six years. So we're speaking about the high technology classes, uh, eliminating third shift in, in public schools and uh, equipping number of universities. And now annually we're spending 14 billion for equipping universities out of the federal budget of 18 trillion. And the federal level is responsible for uh, for the universities, 14 billions a year for the whole country. We have over 1,000 universities. So what it speaks about the country, which wants to make a breakthrough and to make a leap forward. This priority is not enough. And I'm, I'm seeing in this and in some other steps, it's, it's a question. It's a question of the lack of overall structure. It's, these steps are not bold enough, I should say. And um, of course, I could uh, dwell on other structural steps. So. Yeah, I totally keep silent because it's a painful thing that you've been speaking about that education. Uh, we need to do something. 
I would dare is to disagree with Alexei Kutrin because the money are being uh, allocated within the indexation principles. Excuse me, uh, we have agreed. These numbers are a public knowledge. In, within the six years, eight, eight plus one trillion, eight plus one trillion um, are being allocated for the national projects. Additionally, but in overall, for implementing of these national projects, uh, almost. 26, excuse me, 28 trillion Russian rubles will be allocated in six years. Uh, in addition, yes, we have been saying that the budget in the, in the last years, its share in the GDP has been decreasing. After additionally we have been allocating this money, the share is growing somewhat. If we did not have that nominally, yes, uh, everything would go according to the annual indexation, I mean the expenses of the spending, but there would be no additional resources. In addition to these resources, we are reformatting existing uh, resources, including financial resources, which will be spent for the national projects. And we are building a new management system. And the risks that you've mentioned about, the risk is that at the very first stage for us, to build this vertical and the understanding uh, of uh, the federal center and the regions they have their own their own perspectives and we with the administrations of the Russian regions and the heads of the Russian regions, we have to do a number of uh, educational, or should I say, um, not even the seminars, but meetings like the public council that we are having so that everyone would be involved and everyone would understand what do we expect from the regions and what regions expect from us. And this type of communication, this type of interaction with the Russian regions is utterly important. Because, like we were saying, the, the overwhelming number of the of the assignments would be about regional um, authorities and and powers and resources will be um, uh, allocated there. And so we have to build such uh, communication levels, which uh, would clearly um, would be clearly conducive to the implementations of the uh, of the this, uh, challenges. Just one comment, if I may. I think it's very important what Alexei Kudin has mentioned prior to that, uh, citing example with investments um, into universities. Yes, it is very important. A couple of times we've been mentioning about this topic. It's about evaluating these national projects, not only as a share of the GDP, as a percentage of the GDP, but in something tangible, visible, and, and experiential for uh, voters and for the general population. Of course, it's a topic for a different session. We have only five minutes left formally and 10 minutes de facto from the time allotted for this session. And since now, We've uh, identified a number of uh, interesting topics, and of course, the whole guide our form is about that. And I will allow myself to ask my final question out of the systemic questions. Uh, I guess we've been approaching to this question, but haven't formulated it yet. Will national projects foster the change of the structure of the national economy? It's one of these uh, super assignments. Sergei Sabanin, would you please comment? I would say it's a question more likely for my colleagues, but yes, we'll ask them too. If I knew what the changing of the structure of the economy, I would, I would answer, because we're saying the structure of the economy. What is the structure of an economy? Could you please elaborate? I'm speaking about the oil and gas and uh, non-oil and gas components. Um, I think uh, we, we have to produce as much oil as we produce now. We should not decrease it. People are saying, why do we need such an economy? Why do we produce so much oil and gas? Americans listen to, this, to us and begin to uh, boost their oil and gas production. Why would we change it? I do not quite believe when we say that the share of the small and medium business will be 30%. Then we have to close down Gazprom and Rosneft, and then the share of the small business will be 30%. Without it, there will not be 30%. Or uh, just give out the uh, oil fields to the small and medium business. What kind of structural reforms we are talking about? The other thing is that in the structure of the economy, There'll be more and more services, and the Moscow is one um, example of that. The share of industry is decreasing, the share of services is increasing. And speaking about financial sector services, tourism, 
it's uh, it's a normal trend. The economic turnaround from industry more towards a human uh, capacity, from industrial economy to human economy. Watch this is what should be happening. Why I'm speaking about big cities and agglomerations because it's a very obvious trend. It's a global, international trend, and without it, the new innovative economy and the new breakthroughs will not happen. If we will again spread um, all of our money thin across the millions and millions kilometers of our territory, we will not see any breakthrough, whether we want it or not, but we have to use political will and say, we have these growing points and let's focus on these growing points. When we'll have more money, yes, we'll be helping other fields, but it all takes money. Alexei couldn't mention that the foundation of the all endeavors is the economy, the budgetary revenues, and then we can implement social policies. But when we spread it thin, I don't think it's going to work. So one of the main things is the spatial development of the country and the priorities of the spatial development, which is very important. And it uh, also, it's not simply an abstract thing, but it's about the new trends and the new challenges of the global economy, the bigger role of the human capital, for example. Alexei, what would you say? I would agree with uh, Sergei that um, speaking about the bigger cities and agglomerations, they are going to grow in the next six years at a faster rate than other parts of Russia. It's a given. It's a fact. Because our big cities and the rate of growth in the cities above average. We've had actually a separate session at the past forums. Yes, it's a global, non-international trend. And this is why if we really want to make a leap forward, agglomerations will, will give us more in the next six years than other uh, re regions. But speaking about the mid-cities and small cities, small towns, they are going to get orders and to get some result. In this case, everybody wins. It's um, overall development, but simply these are the laws of this development. Locomotive of this development will be the big agglomerations and the megapolises, and everybody else will follow. And in this sense, I would agree in where we are going to help uh, with the infrastructure, we'll connect big cities. If you remember my idea or our idea, which has been really elaborated, for example, Ural's agglomerations around the city of Yekaterinburg and Chelyabinsk could become a very strong power house, Povolsky with the city of Kazan in Ulyanov, Samara, Saratov, uh, the city of Novosibirsk and, and others. If we push them a little bit, nudge them a little bit, it's going to give us uh, some advanced development. But in the second aspect, I would like to slightly disagree with Sergei Sabiani. But I hope he will specify his position. No one limits the production of oil and gas in our country. Licenses are given every year. New licenses are given. The question is that our structure, which we have now, which is now so complicated, it's very hard to in expand it. The growth will only 1%, 2% on average. But the country should, we should live with 3%. It means that uh, advanced sectors, services and goods should give 5 to 7% in order to have the average of uh, around 3%. 3.5. And it would happen in industrial centers, for sure, where we have the conglomeration between intellectual resources and industrial resources. In this sense, the structure will change, and it is changing already. And the budget system for the recent years, for the next years, is planned for uh, decreasing automatically the share of uh, an oil and gas without any limitations, even from OPEC side. And uh, due to this, we will uh, reduce the rent we receive from this sector. And for the next three years, it will shrink by 1% of GDP. This is, will be the royalty which will go to the budget of Russian Federation. This is so evident and so, so, so obvious. Uh, that's why we can say that the structure will change. And in order not to go very deep into it, I have two proposals here, business-like proposals. First to our talk, what is uh, a key for investors, a key thing for investors to start investing. There is a so-called uh, Belosov's initiative to invest. So far, I think uh, it's not a very um, breakthrough uh, one and uh, advanced one. If uh, government together with, with the chamber would set 7%, 7% should be followed as key parameter for 
uh, change of uh, our or our climate, not our, not our attitude. Uh, everyone should make the decision for on its own, his own own. Uh, we should uh, make a special control there, and it would improve the trust if we do it stepwise. And another question now. Uh, the law on the protection of Russian uh, internet segment is uh, now discussed. It is introduced, and uh, some ways of blocking uh, is uh, discussed. It is irritating for everyone who invests in internet and technologies. They do not feel all the time where are these limitations and how they going to work. This is so important for this breakthrough of uh, Russian economy, especially in the digitalization area, that it should. Uh, it requires uh, overarching development, uh, the, the discussion. I would propose for the government to involve all expert groups for this platform for discussing, discussing it absolutely thoroughly, because as, except for in security issues, there are issues of um, investment in these segments. It's not the question only about mass media and, and the social media. Big enterprises are working in the digital contact with the key centers. Uh, big data are being uh, uh, created, automatic process management is going on in big enterprises, and it gives the, a significant and uh, uh, abrupt growth of uh, performance, of labor performance. And if we will be uncertainties in this area, investments could go down here. It's so important and so sensitive, so this uh, law should be uh, worked through. It should be worked through very thoroughly. I would propose two points, two things here, uh, which would increase the trust if we make a lot of uh, efforts there. I have one uh, result. I uh, started to nick so actively, so at one point I uh, uh, felt that I should stop doing it. Um, so we are wrapping up, and um, but without eliminating my question about the structure of the coming year, I will give you an, a chance to summarize what we heard from our colleagues. If we mention the structure of modern economy, I agree with your question, absolutely. What is a modern economy now? Let's set it straight. Uh, the modern economy is the economy uh, where we have uh, high-tech workplaces and high-tech uh, production facilities. And how we can we evaluate it? We can evaluate it by uh, the uh, um, demand for our products in the global market, whether it's competitive uh, in the global market. It's a question, and the question to increase exports what we, by two times for six years uh, would allow to determine and to say whether we fulfilled we fulfilled this uh, condition for high-tech economy or not. That was first. Second, what is uh, changing the structure of the economy? And, uh, well, by the way, Mr. Sabani doesn't believe, but the share of, him of small and medium enterprises should grow. But these are our tasks for six years, to increase the share of SME from 22 to 30 to some uh, percent. It's going to be a modern economy, and uh, small business accounts for services for the most part. Well, I agree that we need to, in the modern economy, we need to talk more and more not only about uh, industrial production facilities, but also we should develop the service area in different uh, industries, also in the industries and areas where our, uh, the state is dominating now. What is the modern economy again? It means uh, that the state share versus the current level is going down, where private business works in areas, in industries where uh, we see the state-owned enterprises are dominating. And of course, digitalization, because without digitalization, it's not possible to provide modern communication, modern economics with uh, databases, with uh, managerial decision-making and uh, other things. And for all this, we have uh, relevant plans, we have uh, resources, and uh, we know roadmaps, we see roadmaps how to achieve this. Our plans are very ambitious. Um, anyway, tasks are also quite ambitious, and if we do not uh, make a breakthrough, which was mentioned by our president, if we do not enter 
the uh, circle of uh, countries, uh, the top five of countries of economies who uh, set now the economic agenda, who are uh, the trendsetters in technologies, and well, in the total global development of uh, the economy and the uh, development of all areas so well well we won't achieve uh, success we need this breakthrough we need resources we need tools and we do have all this we have people who have resources well but we agreed uh, not to finish by this we uh, uh, we have to come back to our question whether it's possible to achieve national goals i agree totally agree disagree well do we have uh, already its voting going? Let's take a look what changes we have. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't note down the percentage, 38, 34, if I remember, right? So do national projects help change the economy structure? Well, at least we can see the trend. Uh, these are, this is a different question. Well, dear organizers, please remove this question. Uh, there were two variants, but we, we really discussed the structure. But let's come back to the first question, which we asked in the very beginning to compare the dynamics. Do national projects make it possible to achieve national goals? We did have it, yes, uh, 38, 34. Now, can you do it again? Uh, can you put it again for voting, if it's possible, in our PC system? Do you have this uh, question on your machines for voting? Mm, you, you don't. Can you help me, please, someone from the organizers? Is it going? Is it... I don't see the countdown. Yes, we do have the countdown here. Well, I hope it works. Let's be patient. Attention in the room is growing. Oh, you also have such machines for voting, don't you? It's the, well, the secret voting and an ugly thing, but uh, no one invented something better still. Okay, what we've got. Well, stability in our society is uh, is really an achievement. Well, not much changes. Partially agree, not sure. Well, the government has a room for development to make it more convincing. It's to, f to the favor of the government, most probably. Well, these, is, these are the results of the stability and proportionality of the system. We should give two uh, variants of it. As soon as we have democracy, absolute confusion. And you speak about pleasant. Many thanks to distinguished participants. Uh, thank you very much and have a good forum.